After many years of knowing I should, but not being able to for various reasons, I was finally able to check some of Naoki Urasawa's works. I started with Monster, then went on to Pluto, and I'm now reading 20th Century Boys. I was told countless times that Urasawa was an absolute boss, a genius even, a master of his craft, but I only really understood what that meant when I was reading his books. I have to say, I was not lied to. I was not led astray. Naoki Urasawa is, without a doubt, one of the best mangakas I've ever had the pleasure of reading. Today, I'll be talking about three things that stand out to me when I think of why Urasawa might be considered such a master storyteller. Hopefully, by the end of this video, if you haven't checked his stuff out, you'll be convinced to go to your local bookstore and buy one of his books. So let's get into it. But before we get started though, I'd like to welcome you to Manga Analysis, where I do little reviews of the manga I've been reading. If you like what you've seen would like to see more, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. Maybe even uh, leave a comment. Let's, uh, let's get a conversation going. So to make my point in this video, I'll be referencing three of the series, Monster, Pluto, and 20th Century Boys. I want to be transparent and say that I have not finished 20th Century Boys, but it shouldn't affect the validity of what I'm saying since what I'm saying is pretty well expressed in all three of those series regardless. So the first thing that stands out to me when I think of Urasawa is his protagonists. They feel fleshed out, they feel relatable, they feel real. Not only is their narrative and the way they go through their lives incredibly convincing, but their design is also flawless. Whenever an anime or manga gives us a quote-unquote relatable self-insertable protagonist, we usually end up with something like this. This. Or this. Or this. Or this. This is what Urasawa gives us. This guy. And this guy. And this guy. None of those guys look like me, but they all look like someone I know. This guy could be my dad. They don't look like the typical manga protagonist. In fact, they just look like regular dudes. Maybe someone that would be a filler character in someone else's manga series. And that's what I love. It's always going to be hard to convince me that this lad over here could be me or whatever or some everyday normal guy I'm supposed to feel a connection with. But this guy, yeah, I, I feel it. This guy and I, we'll vibe. We'll vibe for sure. What's even cooler is that the protagonist from Pluto is a robot. And yet, the way he's written, and I mean, that kind of goes hand in hand with the premise of the story. But despite that, he still feels absolutely human and real to me. Tenma, the protagonist from Monster, is written in such a way that even as a stranger in his own environment and in a completely different climate than I am, felt like he could have been a real person. The protagonist from 20th Century Boys is this lad, so yes, from his design we can establish that he's just some guy. Like I see people like him every day. But unlike Tenma, who is a genius surgeon, and Gesik, who is the top of the line super robot cop, this dude is literally an everyday normal guy. He has no special skills that I know of so far. He's just some guy that works at a convenience store, and even the way he handles the crazy situation he's in is still how you'd expect someone like him to do. His characters aren't hyperbolized, nor are they exaggerated in their abilities to drive a narrative. They truly do feel like normal individuals. It's the scenarios they're dropped in and how they react to such scenarios that make them feel amazing and exceptional. The next thing that makes Urasawa novels incredible to me is the time spent in building his stories. This isn't something that I think we would ever be able to see nowadays. In popular magazines, there's this pressure to always have excitement every single chapter, every single week. If the series takes too much time explaining something or tries to build layers, it runs a chance of losing the reader, which makes the chances of staying in print smaller, which is a shame in my opinion, but that's how it is. I don't know if this is a product of the times or if people just knew how sick he was, so he had leniency, but Urasawa does not rush anything and really took his time setting up his stories. For example, 20th Century Boys has a slow start, like very slow. Nothing exciting really happens until three quarters into the first big book. For the first chapters, there isn't even really a plot. It's essentially just characters talking to one another and getting introduced to its large cast. You have an idea that something is happening, but you don't really know what. And it's not necessarily super intriguing either because the characters themselves don't really pay attention to it. Eventually, it's clear that something is going on and that there's reason to be excited about it, but it takes a while. And that's absolutely fine. When things finally click and urgency takes over, it's amazing because you had such a strong base to build 
build all that tension on. Typically, you expect the first chapter to end with a bang to draw the readers in to make them want to read the second chapter. That is not really the case with Urasawa's series. Monster is another series that had a slow burn build. The very important draw point doesn't even happen in the first chapter, it happens a little later. Not as slow as 20th Century Boys, mind you, but it still took its time setting itself up, and it's only better for it. While creating amazingly real characters isn't necessarily something that Urasawa has sold Dominion on, I can't really think of any other series that I've read that has been able to pull off such intricate, slow-built stories. The only other one that comes to mind is Death Note, but it still had a very punchy way of having its narrative told. And then there's Steins Gate, which is a visual novel anime, so it doesn't really count, but definitely check out Steins Gate though, it's seriously like absolutely sick. I think stories that aren't afraid to take their time building themselves are the best kinds. I love feeling like I got to know a character before the story starts. That way I'm already invested, I already feel a sense of kinship with these characters, and once they're thrown into the fire of the story, I don't have to be convinced that I have to care about them because I already do care. Like I saw this guy mop this convenience store and was distraught when some random guy tried to steal cigarettes. Of course I'm going to care when his best friend turns out to maybe be a serial killer. Okay, so finally the other thing that makes Urasawa's writing so good is his villains. Which is why I won't elaborate. Haha! <laughs> No, but seriously, this is a weird one. I have conflicting feelings about how I would talk about this one. First, being transparent about it, I've been having a difficult time trying to put this into words. Not that his villains are indescribable, I'm just a struggle bug and words don't come easy to me, hence why I say it's amazing like 48 times in my scripts. Second, I am terrified of spoiling anything. For example, the build of Monster's villain is so beautiful yet long that I'm not sure I want to say anything about it. I don't even know what I would truly say to tell you how I feel. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to refer you to a great video done by a much better essay writer than me. I watched his videos in preparation for the script and honestly everything I was trying to say clumsy and awkwardly so, was said in that video, with much better words. I can't help but feel like this is a cop-out. You clicked on this video to get some answers, and I'm just sending you to another video. However, you could also just take my word for it, as I hit you with the good old reliable, <laughs> dog. His villains? They're amazing. <laughs> Huh. What I can't say, however, while I do think the villains from Monster is a god-tier level of awesomeness, the villain from Pluto is also remarkable. What's interesting about Urasawa's villains isn't necessarily what they are, it's what you imagine them to be. For example, in Monster, you pretty well know very early on who the villain is, but not the why, the how, or even the what. And even what you do know, you don't really know because the amount of layers that this villain has is pretty incredible. Overwhelming, even. In Pluto, you have a sense of the what of the villain, but nothing else. It's sort of a whodunit sort of story, but even then, as you find out more about the potential villain, all the layers start being uncovered, and as far as who and how and whatnot, you realize that you truly don't know as much as you thought you did, and the webs that are weaved go deeper than you could even imagine at first. That's all I'm going to say. Seriously, for a much better sense of the villains, check out the Mass Man's video. I'll leave a link below. So those are my three reasons why I think Urasawa is a master storyteller. Realistic protagonists that truly do feel relatable, incredibly meticulously slow built stories that took the time they needed, and finally, brilliant villains. There are so many other elements I could have spoken about in this video, seriously so, so many, but those three felt like the ones that called me the most. I was very late to the Urasawa wagon, but now I can honestly say that I'm hooked for life. These are stories that I know I'm going to want to reread again and again, just like I did with Death Note and a few others. If you haven't yet checked out Urasawa's stuff, but are feeling like you kind of want to, please just do it. I was like you once, but now I see it. I see it all. If I had to recommend one of these three, I think I would lean on Pluto. Not because it's better than the other two, simply put, it's shorter and it's a little easier to get into. However, seriously, check out all three. They're great and I'll be chanting their praises for as long as I live. I can already tell I'm now going to be that annoying guy who inserts himself into any conversation where fiction is mentioned and be like, oh, yes, you're watching House of Dragon, <laughs> hmm, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Have you read Monster? Or, oh? The boy in striped pajamas. <laughs> nah, I only partake in sophisticated works of fiction. <laughs> Speaking of, have you heard of Pluto? Ugh, that's, that's a grim future for me, but I'll take it. I will embrace it. Well, that was my Urasawa video. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Have you read any of his works? If so, what's your favorite? Any other offers or series you'd recommend knowing my newfound obsession with this man? Please let me know in the comments below. 
I hope you enjoyed this little video, and if you did indeed enjoy it, consider subscribing. This was Manga Analysis, and I'll see you in the next one.